Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Today is Monday, May 15th, and this is our weekly Westchester update. We're going to go over a few issues that are important here in the Westchester community with you over the course of the next half an hour to an hour. And uh, we're very happy that you uh, tune in. You can watch this uh, on Facebook live now, or you can see it uh, in a taped format later uh, to catch some of the information. In a few seconds, we're going to be joined by Westchester County Clerk Tim Idoni. I'll give him a proper introduction at that time, but he is our guest this week to go over things that are happening uh, in the office of County Clerk uh, that he's performed so admirably over the years. We're going to discuss a number of uh, upcoming events and activities. Ken Jenkins, our Deputy County Executive, will be with us. Uh, to talk about uh, how we intend to honor Lawrence Otis Graham, and then also some of our other recreational activities that are coming up, the Salute to Seniors program. Uh, I'll cover the upcoming Memorial Day services that we're having at Lasden Park in a couple of weeks as we approach the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Ellen Hendricks, who's our Director of Research, will be with us to talk about the unveiling of the Healing Garden, very special facility at Ridge Road Park in Hartsdale. And uh, we'll also talk, of course, about the, the issue of the day, which is uh, the migrant situation, uh, where we are at this stage of the game, to give you an update and let you know where we are. Uh, but for the immediate moment, I'm very happy to introduce a friend of mine for a long time, Tim Idoni. Tim is Westchester County Clerk and has been County Clerk since uh, 2006, having been elected in 2005. He has served now five terms, the making him the longest standing County Clerk in the history of Westchester County. And that is position is one of three countywide elected positions that are not judicial, County Executive, District Attorney, and County Clerk. And that position preceded the establishment of the County Executive position. The County Clerk has some very specific responsibilities. It may be that over the course of your normal uh, life, you don't interact much with that office. Some people deal with it every single day in vital ways. And so we're very happy that Tim has had his expertise to do this. By profession, Tim has served as, a, as an executive in uh, village government, uh, assistant village and uh, village manager, assistant city manager, and then he served very admirably for parts of four terms as mayor of the city of New Rochelle, and then uh, elevating to uh, the county clerk's position in 2005. He's, he has revolutionized the office. He's done some things that uh, today we could have only dreamt about back when he first took office. And we're very happy to count him as a friend as well as a very uh, outstanding elected official. So with no further uh, delay, let me introduce Westchester County Clerk Tim Idoni. Tim, thanks very much for coming. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you, George. Nice Thank to you. see you again. Thank you so much for having me here today. Good afternoon, everybody. It's very nice to see you. <laughs> Recognize Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins as well. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, we don't get to talk about the county clerk's office all that often, so it's really very, very nice of the county executive to give me this opportunity to bring this to the public. Um, as, as the county executive did indicate, most people don't really know what the county clerk's office does until you need us. Um, indeed, if you let me start off by saying if you buy a piece of property in Westchester County, that record, the deed, winds up in my office for safekeeping. You can now do it electronically, one of the innovations that we put in a number of years back, and we were the very first in all of New York State to do it, was the ability to record documents in our land records office electronically. Um, it was quite uh, quite a tussle with the state of New York to allow us to do that. Now 61 out of 62 counties in New York State followed Westchester's lead on that particular area. We're very, very proud of that. Deeds, mortgages, satisfactions of your mortgage, that wonderful, wonderful day after 30 years when you finally paid off that 30 your mortgage, those documents wind up in my office for safekeeping. And hopefully one day, some, either you or your family member winds up selling that property. It is safe and sound in our office, and that's where you go to do it. Uh, we also have, uh, we handle a very significant amount of money for the West, for Westchester County and the state of New York and our local governments, predominantly mortgage taxes. Over a quarter of a billion dollars come into our office every single year, and I have a very small but very established staff that is able to collect those monies, get it up to the county, get it to the state, get it to the locals like New Rochelle and Yonkers, who also get mortgage taxes. An extremely difficult job, but one that I think we handle with a plum, and one that we are very, very anxious to be able to continue doing for a long, long period of time. Um, the real estate market right now has slowed a little bit in Westchester. 
disaster, unfortunately. We're not going to see the kind of revenues that we saw over the last few years. Um, but hopefully this summer, things will start picking up again, and uh, the, the revenues will start coming in much, much faster than they have been. And um, we also file a number of things like maps, subdivision maps, when people have taken a piece of property, divide to subdivide it, developers put in new, uh, new buildings on it. Those maps have to be filed in the county clerk's office, um, along with something called the filing of UCCs, Uniform Commercial uh, Papers. Those are basically what are known as co-ops for the most part. Um, those papers also wind up in our office, as do condos, which file under the whole land records area. Um, I want to keep it short because the county executive has got a lot of things to talk about. I am also the clerk of the Supreme and the county courts. The Supreme Court handles all civil issues in the court system, and the county courts are our criminal courts. All those papers go through my office. An extremely large job, over 100,000 cases a year, small, very, very small most, and some very large. Um, but we have to handle all the paperwork for those, and it's very, very important that it does. The judges depend upon it. We work very closely with the, uh, with the Supreme Supreme Court, the administrative judge, Judge uh, Minahan, uh, to make sure that those, those things come in nice and clean. Um, we are also in charge of notary publics, probably the most boring part of my job, I'll be honest with you. But the fact is that if you become a notary, those paper, that paper comes through our office, we have to make sure that it gets done. You will notice a pattern here where there's a lot of bureaucracy. One of the things that I want to mention is that I can't stand bureaucracy based on my background as a village manager and a city manager. And we have have made cuts to the point where we're literally working with half the staff we did when I started a number of years back. We've gone from 110 down to 60 at this point in time, and we've literally saved the county $47 million over the last 15 years or so, and I'm hoping to hit $50 million at the end of this year. We're very, very proud of that. And uh, by the way, I like services. I don't like to see services cut. We don't need to cut our services anymore. And I'd like to say that the county executive and the county board of legislators have done a wonderful job of moving some of those savings over into departments where, where they're, they're essential for our county residents. And that's what we'd like to do here is to make sure that your services are 100%. And the more money I save, the more money is being able to be moved into essential services in another part of the county budget or to reduce taxes, which the county executive has done very well as well. We have a domestic partners, partnership registry, something that used to be used by our gay community for years and years, but is now used by more of our heterosexual community, believe it or not. Let me explain that for 10 seconds or less. The gay community is now getting married. We're seeing far less gay partnerships. We're seeing more heterosexual partnerships because people who are not getting married are living together. They use this registry to prove that they are staying together and they qualify for benefits in their private sector jobs. A great little benefit for the entire county of Westchester. Um, we also do business certificates. You want to start a new business? This is where you come to get your business certificate. We also handle small claims adjustment reviews. That is known as a grievance against your taxes that has been denied by your local government. If you, if you try to get your taxes reduced and your local appeals board rejects you, you file with our, our office and a hearing officer or a judge actually will take a look at it and see if they've been justified. So you actually still may get a reduction in your local property taxes based on the paperwork that you file in my office. And we also handle very important military discharge papers known as DD-214s. DD-214s is when you're honorably discharged, you file with our office safe and sound. Someday some veteran's benefit may come up and you can't find your papers at home. We will take your papers, copy it, certify the copy, put the copy in our, in our file cabinet. You take your original home. If you lose it, it's always there qualify for veterans benefits by getting that paper back from my office. Um, very, very important, uh, we'd handle passports. We are the number one passport agency in a, of, out of one, there's 19 regions in the country under the passport office of the federal government. We are the number one issuance of passports out of, those, out of this 19th region. Um, we, we do it well. We handle, we put our friendliest people behind that counter to make sure that your process neatly takes about 15 or 20 minutes. And we also have a mobile office that um, goes out and hits every town and city, about 36 to 40, 40 stops every single summer. It's on the road right now. And we just did Pelham last week, as a matter of fact. Um, and we handle somewhere between 20 and 45 passports applications on the mobile office right there in your hometown. And you will get one of those annoying robocalls from me a couple of days before it shows up, so you'll know when it shows up.
Um, we also do identification cards. Um, very, very important, especially to people in their late teens. They may have, may have left high school, no longer a legitimate ID from your school. The ID cards prove that you live in Westchester County. Our staff is well trained to get you through that process. Um, one of my least favorite subjects, because I'm not a gun guy, but we handle pistol licensing in Westchester County. Um, we do it very, very well, although I'd wish that I could take every gun away from everyone in Westchester County. It's not in the cards, but we handle those licensing. It's important that everybody who does have a gun is licensed properly, and, um, and we've just had a major change in Supreme Court decision on how, how many people can have full carry permits. To my great disdain, but I will say to you that we still will handle your license application as respectfully as any other time. It just so happens it's, it's been made a little bit easier uh, to get a full carry permit, and people are taking full advantage of that. Um, I, I would also like to talk about the um, one of the, the best part of my job, the absolute best part of my job, is the naturalization services that we handle once a month um, in the courthouse. I work along with the Supreme Court Justice every single month to put a program together. We have been we used to do 125 twice a month. They've reduced this because of COVID down to 60 a month. Um, if you ever get a chance to come by during one of the services, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. People are so thrilled to have gotten through the process, very proud to be American citizens, and it really is a really neat part of the job. As I said, very bureaucratic, the county clerk's office, but here's the thing where you, their whole life has just been changed with the graduation of becoming a citizen. Very, very proud to be able to do that. Um, we also have something I should mention, our, 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 our nationally awarded Westchester Records Online, which is a system that has all of our land records, all our legal decisions, um, foreclosures, judgments, um, anything you might need that is handled by our office is right online, accessible for free online. If you wish to make copies, you have to pay $20. I have to mention that in order to get the copies, but you get 24 hours on there for 20, for $20. And it's a, uh, it's a system that has um, not only won awards, but solved a lot of people's problems and saves on the environment. If you think about it, no longer paperwork. You can look everything up online, saves you gasoline and the exhaust fumes of coming to White Plains to get a hold of these documents. Everything that you could possibly find needed for my office is right there online under Westchester Records online please look it up it's 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 a great great service and we're very very proud of it um, one of the things that I do and I'm going to do it again tonight as is a taping of this show is the uh, the swearing in of officials of people on committees the appointments that these uh, fine gentlemen make as well as the county board of legislators um, everybody has to either come to my office or file electronically uh, their appointments to the boards and commissions tonight I get to swear in the new chairman of the board of the board of legislators once again a really nice neat thing to do it takes all of about 25 seconds but uh, it's 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 a super super thing to be able to get done and um, we really really encourage everybody to get out there and perform some sort of public service and part of it is come to the office get sworn in bring the family take pictures we got everything set up kind of like this it's real fancy and um, it, it's it's a really neat part of of being part of the whole county of Westchester being part of the family of Westchester um, that's all I have to say today I want to leave it off to the important guys to get their work done today thank you mr. county executive for allowing me to get up for a few minutes ladies and gentlemen Please, please take advantage of the fine services the county clerk's office does. And I want to also, I'd be remiss if I didn't say those 60 people who are working for us do a fabulous job. Thank you to the fine staff of the county clerk's office. God bless you all, and thank you so much, George. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. That's Tim Idoni, Westchester County Clerk. Thank you for your leadership, Tim, and giving us uh, insight into the office of county clerk. Um, we, uh, we have a number of different events and activities that are coming up. I'm going to cover those first and then save... Uh, the, the more heavier duty topic for the end of this. Uh, we've got um, uh, a number of things that uh, represent Westchester County memorializing or creating facilities and areas that take into account uh, some special people and some special situations. Uh, I'm going to ask Ken Jenkins to join us here uh, to mention a, um, a special event that we have coming up this Friday, May 19th, to honor Lawrence Otis Graham uh, at Kensico. Ken? Thanks, George. I mean, this is a, a tremendous ceremony that we're doing for Lawrence Otis Graham um, for his lifelong service 
and well, his lifelong public service in pursuit of racial equity. Um, Lawrence was a great friend of George and myself, and, and certainly through so many things he's done through Westchester County, the, the work he did at a, as an author, um, his service as the chair of, the longtime chair of the police board, and certainly everything he's done in trying to make sure to promote fairness, equity, and, and his, his tremendous writing skills. So on Friday, May 19th, at 11 a.m., we're going to have at the um, Kensico Dam Plaza the dedication of the Graham Garden. So again, May 19th at 11 a.m., it's going to be the parking there is free, um, but we look forward to seeing as many folks as possible to celebrate and recognize Lawrence Otis Graham. And I will have Ken Jordis back up here in a second after we have a few more uh, conversations and a few more briefings. Next up, I'd like to invite Ellen Hendricks, who is uh, our director of research here, also a member of the Greenberg Town Board. But in her capacity here, she's going to talk to us about uh, an unveiling that's coming up tomorrow, Tuesday, May 16th. It's a very special uh, area that's been set aside at Ridge Road Park, which is a county-owned park inside the town of Greenberg uh, in the uh, hamlet of Hartsdale. It's called the Healing Garden. And Ellen's been uh, part of the team that's been involved in this. Ellen, please tell us about the Healing Garden. Thank you, County Executive, Deputy County Executive. Um, in September 2022, in recognition of National Suicide Prevention Month, Westchester County government broke ground on the Healing Garden at Ridge Road Park. Um, it's a very tranquil site for, it was created to build awareness of suicide prevention and create a safe space for reflection for family members and loved ones of those who ended their lives by suicide. And for those of us who have lost family members by suicide, it is, particularly meaningful, and it is most definitely tranquil. I have visited it several times, even though it is not yet open. Um, it's the result of a planning committee appointed in 2021 to provide recommendations for a memorial site, and it, it is introduced in partnership with the Westchester County Government of Community, and then also the Department of Community Mental Health and the Parks Department, um, Parks, Recreation, and Conservation. NAMI Westchester, that's the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, ASFP. Um, it consists of a variety of trees, a pathway, and benches. Benches actually made by a young man who will achieve his Eagle Scout um, status by making these beautiful benches and it is in a circular shape it's situated in a very serene setting and intended as a gathering place for family friends and even those who are interested in contemplating and reflecting on those we've lost to suicide it's also a starting point for education and awareness of suicide prevention And was there more? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we invite people to join us for that event on Tuesday, May 16th. Uh, that's tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Ridge Road Park is 287 Ridge Road uh, in Hartsdale. And uh, you'll see the signs pointing us to the Healing Garden at Ridge Road Park. It's a place, as Ellen pointed out, to be contemplative about those that we've lost uh, for completed suicide and uh, hopefully to show some recognition of their lives and, uh, uh, and, and a place where we can uh, look forward as well to, uh, to a different day and a better day. That's coming up tomorrow. Um, let me ask Ken to rejoin us again to go over some of the other uh, activities that are coming up on the park side of the, uh, of the ledger. Thanks, George. And, and as we've been seeing for, for the last month, um, the Parks Department, Parks Recreation, Conservation, this is their time of the year as soon as uh, the weather starts breaking um, to be able to see so many activities all around in our nationally accredited um, award-winning park system. So this week, May 17th on Wednesday from 10 to 1230, our second of our Salute to Seniors events. So it's the second of the three Salute to Senior events. Um, last week, um, it was in Ridge Road Park. And this um, coming Wednesday, it will be in Croton Point Park up in Croton and Hart, um, Croton on the Hudson. The space is limited. Um, please make sure that you call 914-218-3968. 
So 914-218-3968. A reservation is required for every attendee. It's free admission but and free parking, but a box lunch is going to be served and provided for those individuals, and that's why you need to make sure to register. The event is tented and it's outdoors, and we still have social distancing available. For those folks that like to wear masks or feel that um, it's more comfortable wearing masks, certainly that's something to do. Um, it's not just only fashionable, but sometimes necessary for those folks um, that have underlying health conditions and are concerned about anything going on. This is sponsored by our Westchester County Department of Senior Programs and Services, led by the incomparable May Carpenter. Um, the public, um, the County Department of Public Works is also providing free B-Line transportation based on the County Executive's directive to make sure that there's free B-Line transportation to Croton Point Park for Wednesdays. So again, this is going to be a tremendous opportunity for our, our Department of Senior Programs and Services for the salute to seniors as again, something that was actually modified to the better um, based on COVID to be able to go right around the county. This is the second of those three events. Last week, it was a tremendous day and it was a tremendous crowd that was out there. And again, you never know who's going to show up. It might be the Blues Brothers or it may be the men in black. Now, the second on Sundays, our bicycle Sundays are continuing. Um, this one, May 21st from 10 to 2 on the beautiful Bronx River um, Parkway in the Bronx River Reservation. That Bicycle Sunday, which is sponsored by the, the Parks Foundation with tremendous sponsors of New York Presbyterian, as well as um, Con Edison and Gen Cycles in Yonkers. So again, this is another great opportunity to get out and play and enjoy all of the, of the wonderful park system that we have. Again, during Mental um, Health Month, Health, Health Awareness Month, it is very important to continue Continue to do these kind of activities and whether it is just walking around in the park getting on a bike or rolling around um, skateboarding or skating and being able to take advantage of all of the wonderful wonderful things in your Westchester County Park system thanks George a couple more announcements on these events. Uh, first of all, uh, we hope that all the mothers out there had a terrific Mother's Day uh, this just yesterday on, on Sunday. And usually May brings two major events, Mother's Day and Memorial Day. And Memorial Day, of course, this year is celebrated uh, on the 29th, Monday the 29th. And uh, local governments, municipal areas, local VFW posts, American Legion posts, We'll have a series of activities that begin pretty much on Wednesday before that Memorial Day and then carry through the next five, six days. Uh, Westchester County will have the countywide recognition of Memorial Day on Friday, May 26th. That will be at 1 p.m. and it's at Lasden Park. That's where we have our Arboretum and we also have our Veterans Memorial. That's on Route 35. It's in the town of Somers in the hamlet of Katona. And uh, you can watch it live on Facebook. You can certainly attend in person. Ron Tochi, who is our Director of Veterans Affairs and his office, uh, always has a good program together where we show respect for all those who've made the ultimate sacrifice in serving in our military. And I might add that we place the county's recognition at one o'clock on a Friday so as to not uh, inter, uh, intersect many of the other municipal actions that are happening. You know, we know of all of them, we go to quite a few of them uh, over the course of time. On Thursday night in the village of Larchmont, Larchmont Village and Mermanic Town joined together for a Memorial Day parade, Memorial Evening parade, that is Thursday the 20th. 25th prior to Memorial Day weekend. We know that uh, the village of Hastings has a parade on Sunday of that weekend, May 28th, a midday targeted parade. And then in the evening, the village of Mamaroneck has a parade on uh, Sunday night. And then on Memorial Day itself, most of the communities have services that generally pivot around the 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning period. And there are some other activities that happen throughout the middle of the day. So we, we suggest that you look at what's happening in your hometown, go on the website of your local government and find out when that services are happening. They're traditionally held in the same place each year, a memorial monument, perhaps by town hall, village hall, or city hall. And in some cases, uh, there's more than one event. There's a morning event uh, in the city of Yonkers and one that happens uh, later in the evening at Connor Park. So there's a host of different things that go on with each of the different communities. We invite you to be part of them, but we certainly invite you to be part of the county's Memorial Day uh, services in remembrance Friday, May 26th at 1 p.m. We also want to highlight that uh, we're beginning the series of uh, heritage festivals coming up Sunday, May 21st. 
Uh, that's a little more recent than the Memorial Day ceremony. We begin with Polish Heritage Festival at the Kensico Dam Plaza. Uh, all things Polish will be celebrated. We celebrate all the different ethnicities of Westchester County. And this begins a series of, uh, of nearly two dozen uh, heritage festivals that take us all the way through the end of summer, the very beginning of September. Most every, uh, every ethnicity will be feted at one of these events. Uh, and uh, we have uh, active partners in the, each of those ethnic communities that will enjoy the food and the culture and the music of each of those places. So it begins on Sunday, May 21st, 12 to 6, at Kensico Dam Plaza. And uh, we, we hope you can come to as many of those as is possible. Uh, certainly you can't be part of every single cultural uh, ethnic group yourself, but you can certainly appreciate and enjoy it. So that starts off on the 21st. We also want to highlight that uh, we have been working very closely with the Asian American Advisory Board, and uh, there is a program that's coming up uh, a week from tonight. It is called Surviving and Thriving, a discussion on Asian Americans in Westchester County. There'll be a variety of guest speakers, put on by the Asian American Advisory Board. Marjorie Hsu uh, has, has headed, co-chaired, and now chairs that group. The moderator for this panel will be uh, ABC TV's Channel 7, Safan Kim. Uh, and this uh, event will discuss the findings of a recent survey that we've done in Westchester County by the Advisory Board uh, and what it means for Westchester County's growing Asian American population. Uh, that event is scheduled again for a week from tonight, Monday, May 22nd, 5.30 to 8.30. It's going to be at the uh, Pace Law School, Elizabeth Haub School of Law at Pace University here in White Plains uh, in the Tudor Room, 78 North Broadway. Uh, it shows that uh, this discussion will include remarks from our first Asian American legislator, County Legislator David Imamura, elected back in February. And uh, there'll be discussions on mental health. Uh, including the county's commissioner of mental health, Michael Orth, and Dr. Teresa Shu Walkett, and a panel discussion moderated, as we've said before, including Julie Chin from Make Us Visible, Regent Fran Willis, and uh, NAMI on AAPI needs in Westchester. So it should be a very substantive conversation, and we invite you to attend that. All of these different events, Polish Festival, honoring our veterans, uh, the various recreational programs for our seniors, uh, the fact that we continue Bicycle Sunday, the fact that we unveil the Healing Garden, the fact that we recognize Lawrence Otis Graham. This gives you the kaleidoscope of the different elements of Westchester County and how we try to highlight all of those different things. And over the course of the year, we're going to mention uh, many more of those things as we go month by month by month through the calendar, recognizing each of these different groups and showing some respect and some honor for each of them. Uh, with that, I'm going to close with... Um, some uh, uh, important comments about the migrant situation. Uh, I addressed some of this last week in which I spoke of what was then a story that had broken over the prior weekend. We had some comments from some other county officials in other counties. And of course, I spoke very forthrightly. I quoted from uh, Matthew in the Bible about our belief uh, in this administration that we need to work with uh, the federal government and uh, the city of New York government to try to deal with this issue. Those comments have gotten some positive comment and quite a bit of negative comment. I recognize when you go on social media, people are welcome to express their opinion. It is a free country and you're entitled to your opinions. But uh, I remember one comment that stood out where somebody says that uh, the, uh, the immigrants coming to this country are destroying America. And when I saw that, I thought to myself, the writer has an opinion and he's absolutely wrong. What is destroying America is anger and hatred. Now, you don't have to agree with that. And I'm sure some of you who see this will be offended by my saying this. But I believe this to be true, and I said so last week. Anger and hatred destroys America because the principle of America's founding was based on a sense of equality and opportunity for everybody, not just for some people, not just for me, but not you. Now, the point that I made last week, and I want to amplify it this week, <clears throat> is that this is not just sympathy for people. This is also married to pragmatic action. And as we stand here this day at the moment of this uh, interview, we do not yet have any um, of these migrant individuals who have been placed in any facility in Westchester County. There was quite a bit of discussion about a location in Yonkers that has not come to pass. And uh, the city of New York is still trying to deal with the fact that the immigrant issue has been brought to their doorstep by the governor of Texas. I repeat what I said a week ago, which is Westchester already went through four to six months of housing 1,000 immigrant children in the year 2018. That was created by the Donald Trump administration, and there were four locations in Yonkers, in Irvington, in uh, Dobbs Ferry, and in Somers, where these individuals were already housed in Westchester County. 
And when that happened, there was almost no public outcry. Now, of course, we have public outcry because we're a divided society. We're divided not just on philosophy, but we're divided on politics. And every opportunity that uh, Party A has to criticize Party B, they do. And if I uh, go into next door, I see plenty of criticism of the things that I believe in. But I believe in these things. I've been on this planet almost 70 years, and I've learned some things. And they're not shaken, in fact, by somebody being critical. I listen. I absorb the fact that someone is upset. But I know that it's fear and anger that's driving those comments. It's not a rational understanding of what our challenges are. But let me talk to you about what the rational challenges are. We don't have any migrants placed here at this point in time. If and when we do, there are some things that we will be asking for the federal and the state government to respond to, which we think are practical ways to manage this situation. Number one, we're going to be calling for a satellite immigration court in Westchester County. Why? Because every one of these people that are here are not here illegally. You might say that they're illegal, but that's not how they're here. They're here because the United States government, in long standing, has had a policy where a person can come here and ask for asylum because of the circumstances in their home country. And then that process is adjudicated by a court, by an immigration judge, and is determined whether or not they're granted asylum here in the United States. If they are housed awaiting the adjudication of that case, they are here legally. And while they're here legally awaiting that, we now have the governor of Texas determining that he can't handle the burden himself, so he's going to busload X thousand people to New York City. New York City can't handle all of it, and they need some help from outside and around him. So we believe that there should be a satellite field immigration court established when there are any established housing in Westchester County and for the surrounding counties as well, establish an immigration court. Now, we're told that they don't have enough judges. Fine. The executive authority in Washington should be used to impanel as many judges as is necessary to handle these cases immediately. That is a concrete step that will move the process along. We cannot have people waiting a year, two years, three years, four years in a motel, in a hotel, in a, in, in a tent city along the border of Texas. We need to have these cases adjudicated quickly, and we're going to argue that that type of process should happen in the backyard, anywhere where those people may be housed, because the housing has to be temporary. It is not intended for it to be permanent housing. We don't accept it as permanent housing. We accept that here is a crisis. We want to respond to the crisis, and in that crisis, we want to make sure that there is a process by which these people can be adjudicated. And if the federal government does not have enough immigration judges, then they should recruit judges, retired judges, go through a training program, month, two months, whatever it takes, so that the judges who may have had other legal experience can then sit as immigration judges and go through all of these cases that have accumulated over time. This is a sensible, practical thing to do. And I would argue that having one of those courts in Westchester County would also apply for any of those that are housed in Rockland County, County, Orange County, Putnam County, Dutchess County, Ulster County, or nearby counties, in which case we are providing a benefit so that those people are also not housed here uh, uh, over a long, uh, uh, indiscriminate amount of time. The second thing, we want to see the federal government through the Department of Commerce or whatever uh, entity it is, Department, U.S. Department of Labor, work with the New York State Department of Labor, and we in the county government will, will assist as well, to make sure that asylum seekers have the opportunity to work and to work in those jobs where we most need individuals working, to track them, to make sure they don't slip out of the system, but that while they are here, they are not just staying here day after day uh, idly, that they can be put to work in numerous jobs that are available. The people who are coming here are asserting that they want to work. They don't come here looking for the handout. They come here looking for the opportunity to work. We have, uh, at this stage of the game, almost every restaurant that I pass by has need for waiters and cooks and busboys, and we have that vacancy. There are part of our current workforce, young people in our current workforce have not sought those jobs out. Those jobs remain open. We want to make sure that working through the federal and the state labor departments, that we match an individual who has the discretionary time and wants to work with a job and have them pay taxes on the work that they, that, that they uh, create, gain what resources they can from that work during the period of time that they are here waiting to seek asylum. We do not want them to be here idly uh, where other issues could develop. We want to make sure that the federal housing and urban development and the state's uh, uh, housing and community resources work together in, in the more permanent housing situation. This is difficult to do. Affordable housing is at a premium here for all sorts of people in our society. But if the federal government has not yet come up with a game plan to handle 
uh, the migrants who have come over the border and seeking asylum, then we must do something to do better than just having them stay in a, in a hotel, again, for an indiscriminate period of time. This is the challenge of the federal government. So we are extending the hand of friendship, extending the hand of working together. But we're doing it with a practical mindedness. And that's an important part. And, and for those people who may have fear, but the fear isn't baked into an ideological cake, which is impossible to change. If night after night you believe that something is evil, uh, and that's what you believe, you don't care really what I'm saying right now. But for those people that are concerned, and they say, how are you going to manage this thing? This is part of how you manage it. Westchester County's uh, efforts with policing will work side by side with local governments. Wherever migrants are placed, where they may be placed, we will work with that local government to ensure that there's proper police presence so that these fears of crime, these fears of things happening, can be allayed by our actual policing work. We have a very professional police force. They're capable of handling themselves under any circumstances. We've done so with minimal problems over the course of an extended period of time. We can do that again, working with those local police departments departments that are professional as well all over Westchester County to provide that kind of safety and security. And the county is ready to work through issues of translation services, uh, necessary transportation, some recreational facilities and services that can be accessed to, none of which takes away from our residential base their opportunity to access transportation or recreational services, that these things can work together in harmony. The question is, in this country now, are we prepared to lead and solve problems? Or do we think it is sufficient to just express our anger and let that be our public policy? And there are people who do believe that. There are people who will cultivate votes by merely expressing anger and whipping up anger. And I see it. I understand it. I've been involved in this business for a long time. I know what it's like when people get afraid and when they're furious. But as I said last week, so I say again this week, there are larger issues at hand that we have to be mindful of. And those larger issues at hands come from things that are spiritual, not just earthly and secular. But we have a secular responsibility, adjudication, work, police protection, and, and the logistics of those individuals so that their time here is a productive time and that if they, in fact, are going to be in the United States of America for some extended period of time beyond that, when, they, when asylum may be granted, we will go from there. Does anybody begrudge those people who are in Afghanistan who escaped Afghanistan at the last moment before that country fell to the Taliban. Does, anyone, does anybody begrudge the right for those people to seek a life to leave Kabul and come to the United States? They helped us there during the 20 years we were there. Does anybody begrudge the right of the people in Kosovo who were subject to ethnic cleansing 30 years ago when the war ravaged those countries in Montenegro and, and uh, in, in the areas next to Albania and Serbia. Does anyone begrudge their right to seek asylum? Do any of us really understand what's happening today in Guatemala, or Venezuela, or Honduras, and Nicaragua, El Salvador, Mexico? Is it our lack of knowledge of those conditions that makes us inured to one set of problems and then sensitive to another set of problems? I drew the analogy from the uh, immigration of the 1800s, and I had people tell me, oh, no, it's not the same. It's the same. It's people who are poor, who are oppressed, who want to have a chance, want to have a chance at a life. We have to shape that. We're not accepting people blindly. We're not accepting large numbers of people blindly. But we are showing a practical mindedness. What do you want your government to be? Do you want it to be expression of your anger, an expression of your hatred? Fine. That's what you want your government to be. That's not the America I read about as a young boy. That's not the America of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, which said we are trying to form a more perfect union. This is where we put our public policy down. Time will tell if we are wise or we are foolish, but we are steadfast in believing that there is, there is an American ideal that is higher than our anger of the moment. And that is the policy that we're going to pursue. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.